Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with a very special episode of the IT Business Podcast. As you could probably tell over the music, there was laughter and noise in the background. We are live in Denver for PAX 8 Beyond 2023. This episode is entirely me and my friend, Paco LeBron from Prodigy, Texas, in the house. Paco, what's up? Oh, you know, it's better than good, better than most, as I like to say. And hola, mi gente, listening to uh, another fun-filled episode of the Uncle Marv's IT <laughs> Business Podcast. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, um, this is the first time we've been to an event outside of Unconvention, TechCon. The other ones. What other ones? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get invited to a Cronus. <laughs> Yeah, Cronus was interesting for sure. Um, in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, in Miami. That's yeah, because they're up in Fort Lauderdale too. Yeah. So yeah, that one was a strange one that kind of occurred. Well, yeah, it was a strange one that kind of occurred. They just kind of approached us and said, "Hey, you want to come up as a media?" And I said, "Okay, great." And so me and Rick go down there, um, and they took care of us, and you know we appreciate our Cronus ta- uh, taking care of us from there. And when we go down there, we get into the media room, and you know. As you probably have, we're, you know, podcasters, we're not assuming this is a full-fledged media briefing that you would see usually on TV and all that sort of stuff. And so when me and Rick rock in, the first thing out of Rick's mouth is, we're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, I was like dude, we're media. We're just, this is what it's like. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> so, you know, it, it was a bit, definitely a big sh- uh, shift on kind of what we do on a day-to-day basis to those, you know, really listening and, you know, just our responsibility of us trying to ensure that, A, we provide as much content and uh, news as possible, but also trying to make sure that, you know, we keep our ear to the ground and kind of make sure that everyone's in the, in the know. Yep, that is one of the weird things of being a podcaster. We're kind of in that no-man's land sometimes, especially... Shows like ours where we talk to other MSPs and we, you know, we talk real with right. what's working in our business and not. And sometimes vendors aren't always shown in the best light, yep. but we do our best to, you know, be nice with the vendors and play well. We want to be partners with them, which, you know, we're going to hear for the next two days. Community, community, community. So <laughs> with that transition, how, what do you think about the uh, PAX 8 Beyond so far? So it's very interesting. Um, so quite frankly, you know, big ups to Rob Ray, um, you know, the, what he's done in the space in general, let alone what he's done to try and encompass community. I think that um, there's a lot of players that had been with Pax8 that really drove that mission. Um, and it's one of those where the community has really been strong inside of Pax8. You know, you have those that are very diehards. And it really shows in a lot of the sessions. But as far as for the event, I think the content's been great. I think it's really been awesome to hear, you know, actual PAX 8 people and reps. If you're a partner, you kind of have your own specialist. But to really hear them and go through some of the stuff that they offer in person has been very impressive versus, you know, a sponsor that's paying, you know, for educational content in, in turn for a lead, which there are some here. Um, but it's been all really educational content. I just sat through a vague, uh email security one that, you know, as we're starting to get more serious about email uh, in the last several months, we've it's just kind of more of an eye opener of what to take a look at and what are some real concerns on their side to kind of research it. But so far, I can't complain. It's been a great time. Um, I have, definitely have my team here. They're learning a lot, kind of uh, dividing and conquering on a lot of the sessions. And it's been a great time on day one. Yeah, your team. Your girl tried to, uh, you know, come in and, you know, scoop up your spot here. I don't know yeah. what she was thinking. What she was thinking. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was going on with there. So, yeah, so my team is definitely roaming around. Uh, you know, and, and so my, it was interesting about my team is that none of them have any real IT or tech background. Um, they have really great customer service and customer uh, success management from their previous roles. And so bringing them in and kind of teaching them that, in my opinion, I, you know, as I look for employees, You know, customer service, uh, being able to be personable, that type of relationship is so hard to find and teach. So when I find that, the IT stuff can kind of come afterwards. And so, um, yeah, they came here running around trying to figure out what they can get, be as as big a sponge as possible. Um, So, yeah, it's been definitely very interesting. And, of course, you know, we met some of them at TechCon last year, so they're very familiar with us. So they're always trying to uh, poke some fun when they get the chance, when they uh, have the ability to do so. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back. Now, we're going to probably get some new listeners of the, on this particular show because of the Pax 8 event. Yep. But you and I, we've known each other, I think, what, 2014, 2015? 
Sounds about right. Yep. And we've, we've gone through transitions together. Both of our businesses have changed. Yours probably more than mine. So let's talk about that real quick because you mentioned, you know, a team of non-technical people. Yeah. Now, I say that about my wife because <laughs> <laughs> she works in the business and is not necessarily tech, but trying to get her to, you know, transition yeah. into a lot of different things that I need her to do. Sometimes it's a little bit of pulling teeth and stuff. Yeah. Now, you've hired people, and you probably have a little bit more, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? I think the wife will listen to this, so i got to be careful. <laughs> so, uh, but you can probably be more direct with them about being a part of the business and, and you know doing jobs that will help you grow and stuff. But okay. tell me a little bit about the perspective because you went from part-time, yep. full-time, now you have a team. What's that been like? So it's very interesting. So it's funny you say that. I actually just recorded an episode for, I was hoping to release tomorrow uh, uh, for Tech Talk Tuesday, but um, kind of catching up and, and trying to figure out, because it's been a while since I've been able to share that story. But yeah, like you said, um, you know, we, we got introduced to each other back in 2014. You already had your business very established. Uh, you, John Dubinsky, when he was over at the Maven Group, um, were kind of the, the pillars of that community and everyone wanted to figure out how do I get there as a solo business owner, but also making a living and not just having to survive, but actually thrive and, and kind of move forward. And so I always felt that, you know, saw that as a very positive, um, uh, examples. And so, you know, going through part-time when I was a database manager, for about 10 years at a pharmaceutical consulting firm, you know, that department got laid off. So me being able to shift to full time was not so much a jump, but a push. And so I just had to figure out how to, how to fly. So being able to figure out how to go through that process, um, leveraging certain people. I think you were one of my first calls with some of my other people. I'm like, Hey, look, you know, I'm scared as you know what sugar, honey, iced tea. And, you know, what do I do? What, what, what are some things that I should just pay attention to? And, you know, it was nothing different than what we share uh, on a day-to-day -day basis on the podcast, but it was one of those where we tried to figure out, okay, this is what needs, you know, just, you got, you got to relax. You got to figure it out. It's not going to be the end of the world. If you give yourself and you, oh, and I think the biggest piece was the discipline of making sure you hold yourself accountable, which is the biggest piece because when you're working at W2 or a job, you have someone else holding you accountable. So being able to do that has been really difficult because if you don't have motivation is great, but if you don't have the discipline, it's very hard to kind of achieve that. So yeah, fast forward a couple years, uh, you know, I've, I've recorded many of episodes of how I transitioned, struggled, uh, and I tell you everything from a very bad accident I had at a job site um, that almost made me quit. Um, you know, uh, 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 financial issues that I had, lawsuits from bad loans I took out trying to make it and. So it was a, definitely a, a hard 20, uh, year of 2018 when I kind of was in my full-time year. And, you know, it just one of those where you had to be persistent and kind of kept going on. So just talking to John Dubinsky at the time when he was still at the Maven Group, he had been a huge, huge, huge factor on a lot of the stuff that we do. It helped me out with some with uh, jobs that he had, a subcontracting with him, learning. Uh, so it's been a, it was a great experience and the run um, up until 2020. And so 2020, as everyone knows, uh, the shelter in place had occurred because of the, of COVID and, and everything like that. And it kind of just forced me to the point where after seven years, I just could not keep up with everybody of what they wanted. And everybody wanted everybody remote, everybody at the same time. And I had to make sure I built them or I wasn't going to make any money and make it continue moving forward. So, um, and at this time I kind of caught up with the managed services and, and kind of had our monthly recurring, but that allowed us to really expand on teams um, and really expand the employee asset of it and try and find good people. Right. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you specifically, because mm -hmm. I had been down the road of having techs that worked for me and haven't had that since 2012. Yep. Uh, I have subcontractors now, right. so I have them when I need them and they're not sitting around doing nothing <laughs> when I don't. Right. Um, how has that been for you with your staff? Because you, you have a full staff for, mm -hmm. what, the last two years? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, it'll be uh, three years. So uh, Rosa, who's my uh, now my director of uh, business ad administration, she's been with me for three years as of last month. Uh, my lead technician has been with me for three years in July. Um, but you, may, you make a very good point for those that are trying to possibly consider 
uh, subcontractors or employees or staying sing, uh, solo um, is, you know, we had a lot of subcontractors. We had subcontractors for cabling. We had subcontractors as our on-site uh, technicians and desktop support. Um, but what would happen is I think exactly like you mentioned is that, you know, the problem or the solution you had is that there's just not someone sitting around that you had to pay. Whereas for me, I didn't have dedicated resources when things happened, um, especially with on site. So um, my two technicians are remote. Um, they're out in Latin America. They work directly with me. Uh, they were hired through a freelance agency, but have since uh, hired them direct to work with uh, Prodigy Techs. And so them and being able to learn how to be there without being there was definitely a difficult struggle, um, but we got over it with some good uh, processes implemented by John Davinsky, which we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then uh, really it was just more of trying to figure out how to get that dedicated support because we just got to the point where me trying to coordinate my subcontractor schedule to my client's expectation was becoming harder and harder, um, especially with clients that we were taking on that had more production servers and being able to have, you know, that, you know, network that went down and I'm not available. For example, I'm here. So how could I set that up? And it became very difficult. So um, the transition to employees for me was a necessity, um, especially back in uh, 2020. So when we went from, it was just me to about four employees at the time that summer. Now, I know that there's a couple of stories in there. We don't have to go into them now. <laughs> the joys of uh, maintaining employees. Uh, how has the process been in terms of you as the owner learning to step back, let them work, or being engaged enough to know that when something's not working, you can then step in and make sure they're back on track, uh, things of that nature. How has that process been for you? Difficult. <laughs> um, you know, and, and there's a lot of ums and stuff because as I'm thinking, I'm trying to make sure I be concise with how I'm saying it is we I literally had this conversation this morning where at first it was hard for me to like my whole goal was to step away um, for anyone who's listening knows that I do own uh, uh, or I'm partners with uh, Rick Smith over at. Red Actus uh, Technology, we both own MSP Unplugged. And so that business has been, was taking a lot of effort from me back in 2022. And so I had stepped away hoping that with the processes and everything that I put in place that I've delegated as best as possible. Did not turn to be the case. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and you said it best is like, how did I learn to have to re-engage once I saw things were falling through the cracks? And so that's what we're trying to re really solve right now. So, what I've learned is the processes that we've had before do not adhere to our growth as we are now. So my processes as a solo uh, technician slash business owner with subcontractors does not relate to staff that wants to know and help but are limited by my bottleneck, whether that's pro improper documentation. I made an agreement with uh, one of the uh, staff members or the office managers and didn't document it in the ticket. Um, so there's a lot of that that's been going on recently. Um, Thus, my bringing in to uh, John Dubinsky, which, again, as I mentioned previously, he was of the Maven Group before he successfully sold back in 2021, 22, 21. Um, and so, you know, he was enjoying retirement life as much as possible. Uh, he definitely missed the technician and the tech stuff. So I was able to coerce him into coming into joining me. Um, so he is a staff member now working with me and helping kind of a restoring that mentor mentality of, hey, look, this is what you really got to focus on some stuff. Um, your team is driven. You just got to help, the, you know, you got to give them the car. They want to drive, but, you know, you just told them to hit the gas. You didn't teach them how to hit the brakes. And so it's things like that and learning yeah. lessons that he uh, is helping me to this day. Um, so difficult, uh, but it's definitely something where we're trying to kind of go step by step to help that be a little bit easier and efficient. Okay. So John was somebody who... You, you had mentioned earlier that he and I were kind of kindred spirits yep. at the time, being solo techs. Yep. Um, he, I think he probably did a much better job of doing more with less yep. than, than I did. Um, I obviously was able to do my stuff. I had my processes. Uh, I think my problem is was when I did hire those techs, for some reason... 
they could only do the process up to a certain point. Mm. And my frustration was, why can't you finish? <laughs> you know? Right, why can't you get <laughs> you over know? the hump? You know, yeah. or if they got to a point where, you know, sometimes the checklist that we do don't always account for option A, B, and a C. Right. And it may just be A and B. And, you know, trying to get a tech to, hey, you can figure out C. Why don't you go try? Right. Uh, my frustration was, you know, if I had to tell you to go try to find C, that was a problem. Right. However, some of it could have been me. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. Um, so that leads me to a, 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 a phrase that I heard on another show. And we've heard the phrase before, but it just, I think when I was driving, not driving, flying here to Denver, listen to podcasts on the plane, and I think, and I might be wrong, Carl Polachek's podcast, you know, the guy who stole my opening music, um, I think it was his show, and the question came up, people or processes, mm. and trying to determine which one was more important. Now, they had a much different answer that actually added a third component to it, but I think it's not a question of people or processes. It's people and processes yeah. and tweaking them along the way. Yeah. Because you can't just simply rely on one or the other and you have to tweak them. Our business, you know, changes so fast. We have to change our processes with them and our people have to change with them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's such a big piece to understand. Like we're in an industry that is constantly changing. And so you have to figure out how... You can adhere to that, and it's very hard to be flexible and nimble, but there are processes that tend to stand true in the test of times where if you're consistent with certain avenues, you should allow for the flexibility to come. Your frustration kind of fits exactly as mine where, you know, for example, we had a client, or we had a client where they were doing a migration to SharePoint, and he was able to see it all the way through, but SharePoint got full. And he said, all right, well, we got to send it over to Paco to, to see what we can do. And so for me, I was like, all right, well, that's cool and all. But, like, you know we work with Pax8. You know that that's where we get our Microsoft. You know they have a support line. You've used it before. Why didn't you feel the need to email them to help you educate that, hey, it's because of the license count and, you know, whatever the case may be. So it was one of those where this ticket waited over a week, two weeks, and now we have an angry client. Ooh. And that's when I get pulled in. I always seem to get pulled in when there is the angry client. I have to take the beating to the face, and then, all right, guys, how did we get here? Nine times out of ten, it turns out it's the process, right? So, as you just said, it, it being able to not only create the process, but encourage your team to say, hey, this is not the defined set. There is a way to look at it outside of it. But it really goes down to the pr process, too. I'm sorry, to the person as well. Um, so what I did to solve that, what you said, because I was getting to a point where I was butting heads with a lot of, with all my team. And it turns out that I just didn't know how to work with them. And so uh, Luis Gerardo over at Scalepad now, um, but when he ran his MSP OOC in, in um, Canada, he had taught me about uh, where, you know, everyone heard, learns about the disk profiles and red, blue, yellow, and whatever the colors are. So he told me about another one that was a much easier read. You don't have to get certified in it. It was called Working Genius. And so Working Genius, it was a $25 per person license. We got everybody to do their self-assessment. And it taught you that there's six qualifications or six types of genius that they do. Um, and it's anywhere from wonder, curiosity, engagement, you know, rallying the troops, things of that nature. So it was very int intuitive for me to understand, okay, this person loves to be able to be the one that riles everybody up and and, and uh, to a common cause. Whereas the other one, my lead technician, he has the wonder capability to really focus and say, okay, I can go ahead and push the envelope a little bit further because I'm curious enough to learn what's going on. Whereas my other technician, he does what he needs to do. And that's, just, <laughs> that's you know, it. kind of what the case is. Right. So, um, yeah, so it, it's very interesting in general for being able to piece that all together. Um, but yeah, in the long run, it just really helps with understanding your people so that the process that you have in place should ideally be adhering to what they are able to work with and work with one another. Because I'll tell you what, once you get to six, seven people, apparently some people don't like others. And that's a whole nother uh, story as well. That is true. And what you just talked about, and you saw me fumbling through my phone, I was 
actually looking for, I met uh, not necessarily a business coach, but somebody that deals with employee dynamics, mm. uh, not in the tech space, uh, from another uh, industry that I've worked with, and I'm actually going to be interviewing them soon about those types of things because that's what they you know, talk about is how do you as an employer learn to deal with your employees no. in a way that's not that, you know, beat them over the head style right. that, uh, that doesn't seem to work anymore. And, you know, there's so, many, <laughs> and there's so many things that we need to learn differently. You know, because, listen, I, you know, I'm guessing you were just as much a technician as I was who turned into a business owner. Yep. And, you know, we knew all the techie stuff. Right. And we've heard the business owner stuff from some of the vendors in the channel. Right. But that only gets us so far. Right. You know, these, these interpersonal dynamics and how to deal with people, how to listen which is a hard thing for, for us. You know, sometimes we need to be the ones listening. Right, right. And all of that. So, yeah, it's, right. it's been very interesting. And, and like you said, you know, sometimes you have to get outside help, right? And so I've, I've kind of assembled a couple key members to try and focus and figure out what are certain things. So, you know, right now I'm working with uh, Juan Fernandez, who's been, uh, he's not a business coach per se, but he's done it so many times where, He's able to gain revenue size. He can put the quarter in, figure out where the dollar comes out, you know, understands that, you know, when you get to this part of the of the curve, this is where you add employees. So working with him has understood where things are broken. But again, it goes back to that discipline and reengaging of, all right, I got to focus on this section here. And no matter what fire is going on right now, I have to finish this section because if I don't get this section, the fire is going to just keep going. Right. There's n there's no end in sight, and it may not seem like there's an end in sight, but you got to continue to keep putting those building blocks so that you can eventually kind of see your way around it. So, but I will tell you, you know, the mentality shift of all those roles and, and of my journey has been very difficult. And even now, just going through one of the sessions, understanding what stage you are, um, and understanding, all right, this is the next stage. Well, what do we do to achieve that? Um, and it's very hard to kind of get outside of your own head without having some help, as you mentioned, with either a business coach or someone that you do truly respect that has done this for a long time um, to help guide you along the way. Right. And one of the things that I learned a while back is I've been kind of trying to go through this journey <laughs> of re-envisioning the business. Yeah. Um, and it's taken a little bit longer than I thought just because I've actually learned that my business can actually be in multiple stages at the same time. Mm. depending on the relationship I have with particular clients. Mm. I may be in one stage with one client, but another stage with another client that forces my business to deal with two different scenarios yeah. at the same time. Right. So while you're, at, you're in growth mode with some clients, you're in stability mode <laughs> with others. Yeah. Or even recovery. Recovery, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. making sure that, you know, and, and I think that's the point of, like, as business owners, we all usually have a pulse on our clients, and that's the reason why I kind of transitioned some of my employees' roles on being account managers to understand, like, you know, you feel like you have your hand on the rope just enough, but you just have this hunch that you're going to let go of the rope. And how do you figure that out and, and fix that? And so now being able to kind of understand the temperature of your clients, you can figure out where you got to go for stability, recovery, um, growth, you know. And, and there's quite a few, but like you mentioned, sometimes they all happen at the same time. Right. So it's very hard to shift and really figure that piece out because like, for example, I have a few clients where I want to upsell them because they have multiple locations, but you know, I have another one that just kind of hinted that, Hey, we might be shifting a different direction. So how do I look at them and figure out the recovery operations or, Hey, we just got acquired. And now that's alerting everybody to figure out, well, you know, we may lose this client for internal it. So it's very hard to kind of juggle that piece. Um, but it is important to understand that it will come at you um, at the same time, you know, do I have an answer for that? No. And I'm sure you probably have been trying to figure this out too. Um, but I guess the best, op, you know, way to figure that out is that whatever is the most important to you on the stage of your business is probably going to be the one you prioritize the most. A good phrase from uh, the great quarter, uh, the new Notre Dame coach, Lou Holtz. Uh, you know, he was known for winning. Mm. And he would always say, you know, it's not really about the word win. You have to take that and change it. And don't think of it as win, as in, you know, win or lose. It's what's important now. 
Mm. So whatever's happening in your life or in your business, you get to a point where you've got to make a decision. You've got a customer that's leaving. You've got a customer that you're bringing on. You've got to, what's important now. Right. And that's kind of the mindset that I've tried to figure out how to make that work in my business. Uh, let's go back to, you mentioned his name earlier, um, Florida man, John, mm-hmm. you know, you, you coerced him out of retirement. I did. Twice. And, uh, <laughs> but I think he's turning more and more into Florida man. So how long do you think that'll last? <laughs> you know, I think that, um, you know, we've had a many, so in our first stint, um, you know, I wanted to bring him on. He was only as a consultant, um, and helping out here and there. Um, you know, we, and that stint, uh, it just, you know, he decided I'm kind of done with the tech stuff. This is kind of at the end of like when, um, where the transition in tech con unplugged and MSP unplugged right, at the time. Yeah. So, uh, it was time for him to ride off to the sunset and deliver smiles. And no, that's not a gigolo. He was actually working for Amazon at the time. Um, and so, you know, he, um, it was just a conversation and I would always stay, keep in touch with him and, and such. And he just wanted to get back into it. And <coughs> excuse me, that's already editing there. Um, and so we basically wanted to make sure that, um, you know, it was a fit and, and did he want to continue doing so? And so he spent the you know, next six months as a consultant. Um, we had the conversation in, in, in December and said, Hey, um, you know, do we feel like we want to continue this? And he's, and I said, Hey, you know, I will, I'll keep, keep you on for as long as you're willing to deal with me. Cause I'm not the best person to deal with as well. I tend to get him to my moods and, 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 and butting heads and things of that nature with all my team. And so with him, with the amount of respect I have for him, I always consider his, um, I could always consider our relationship first before the job. So, you know, as of right now, you know, we, you know, like with any employee or any staff member or just partners in general, um, you know, he has given me a lot of mentor information and knowledge. He has given me a lot of great uh, uh, um, ability to kind of take a step back and focus on sales and some of the operations of the business while he helps train our techs. Uh, So as of right now, everything is good. He, you know, we may have to ask him how he feels about uh, the latest tips of P-Tech, but um, so far we're all engines ago and Ahead. Well, we're going to ask him when he visits uh, TechCon in September, and I'm sure we'll get some pulls and tugs and stuff like that. But John has been a, a great asset to the community. Yes. Uh, somebody who's been willing to share his insights, uh, his journey, his experiences, good and bad, mm-hmm. which is what we need. Yep. So kudos to John, and uh, thank you for all of that. Speaking of TechCon yep. coming up here in September, how's that looking? <laughs> It's going. It's uh, it's, it's definitely very interesting. I mean, uh, I think you, uh, we we try to do things a little bit different this year. Um, first, it's going to be on the East Coast. It's the first time it's been in the East Coast for the show. It's always been in the Midwest, um, and we made that decision for a Rick likes to believe because he's in the East Coast. That's not why we did it. Um, but really, we always had a very strong presence from the east coast whether it's up east or upper east or north, northern or i'm sorry lower east um meaning you know all the way up to new york maine all the way down to uh florida and so we decided to do a little bit different this year and uh so we brought it to new jersey woodbridge new jersey that's rick's backyard uh it just kind of made sense because he's not too far off from new york he has a lay of the land and it was more of a a, a test of how can we kind of make this thing more efficient um as i kind of alluded to before rick uh joined on as my business partner back in the beginning of 2021 when we kind of finalized everything and so you know he kind of got fed with a fire hose the past year uh and so we ended up um really going through the motions really trying to go from that piece and so this year we're getting hitting a stride you know he has a lot of more uh kind of a, a known to the podcast slash uh, uh, media world and the in-person events. And so, so far this year has been really good. We've been on, uh, on, on task with the content committee, uh, committee uh, which you've been uh, visiting, kind of hearing what everyone's got to talk about, what we're trying to put on place, uh, trying to manage our vendors. We have a lot of great vendors that are supporting us this year. And uh, I think it's going to be probably one, if I had to say as far as for content, I think we have a very solid show, probably I'm, every year, I'm always kind of iffy on our content when we go into the show, and everyone always says that they love it. Um, but this was the first year that I can truly say that I'm very confident and 
we're going to have a solid show on just content alone. I don't know how the experience is because I haven't been to the hotel. And so I'm, I'm leaving that up to Rick. So for anyone listening. Well, there better, be, any, there better be AC. There, there will definitely be AC. <laughs> um, yeah, we won't have a repeat for, uh, for those that know the inside joke there. But um, definitely it, it should be a great experience. Uh, we're, we're hoping to get a lot of great people. Um, the cool part is those that have purchased tickets are all a majority are new people to the community. Nice. Um, I'm not sure if that's because of the East Coast presence, us advertising it on an Eventbrite, but you know there's a lot of great uh, new names that we're seeing. So we're hoping to build some new relationships, new friendships. Uh, so it should be a good time. For those of you that do not know, TechCon Unplugged is the name of the event that we are talking about. TechCon Unplugged is the website. The event is happening September 7th through the 9th. At the Delta Woodbridge Hotel. That's a Marriott thing, right? That is a, that is a Marriott. Because my Hilton suite wasn't available. So <laughs> ah. well, I, so off air, we'll go ahead and tell you about the story with Hilton. We'll see if they can earn my business again. Ah, so. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you uh, would like another conference that is, I'm going to say MSP focused from the standpoint of it is MSP first. Yes, yep. there are vendors there, but it is truly... Uh, business owner and techs conversing with each other, uh, driving the content, driving the breakout sessions. Yep. Yes, the vendors are there as our su- support and partners, yep. uh, but it is definitely MSP focus first. Yeah, and, and really quick on that, you know, we, it's, you know, vendors are always given the, the, the hard shake of things and they help make things happen around here. Um, but, you know, without their dollars, we wouldn't be able to put on half of the stuff that we have available that everyone loves and, and has a great um, experience with. But I think for our show, we have partnered with vendors that everyone in the community either either has stand by. They really allow for just a focus on partners and true partnership. And I think the fact that with our intimate show where we gather 100, 150 MSPs to really understand that they can hear qualitative feedback. They can talk to someone that, you know, outside of a bigger show um, and may not have that relationship, may not be able to get some of that, uh, you know, speak to a partner of theirs. You know, I, I think Huntress uh, had a really great uh, uh, experience the last couple of years that they sponsored with us. And they said, you know, we prefer these type of events because we can hear what you have to say. And th- those that support Huntress want to support Huntress, help them grow and, and kind of go from there. So it, it, we definitely don't take money from vendors that, um, we don't feel a will provide value to the MSP partners, but in turn, you know, they won't see ROI to that investment because it is an investment on their end. They're a business too. And so it is a two way street. And we talk about this a lot. Um, but you know, I can tell you that there have been plenty of vendors that have wanted to give us a buku, a lot of money, and we had to turn them down just because of just the, experience that some of our committee or our, our, our uh, community has mentioned um and kind of go from there but we try to be unbiased we try to make sure that we it's fair around all places because i think when you go into that mindset everyone wins uh, and that's the true true point of being a uh, partner first uh, community all right so again uh, the link will be on the website uh, tecton unplugged hope to see you there uh so back to here we're both here in denver and you're actually staying past the event and hanging out uh, in Colorado. I am. I am. So I uh, will be here until Friday. Uh, my fiance's very close friend lives out here. Uh-huh, okay. uh, so they are going to do their you know, girlfriend things and all that sort of deal. Um, I will figure out what I'm going to do. I think a couple of people that uh, I hang with here will stick around, so we'll probably find some trouble there. But, yeah, some sightseeing. and I heard there's know, a big old group headed up to Colorado Springs. Uh, that's the first I've heard, but, uh, <laughs> okay. I wonder if that's going to be the clan that, uh, I'll be tagging along with. We will see. Um, but yeah, it will be staying past that and, uh, just soaking in all the, uh, hopefully those Denver rays because it sure has been wet down here. I'm going to say what days. rays it's been <laughs> raining. <laughs> so, all right, Paco. Well, it's good to see you here and spend some time on the microphone together and, uh, any other 
comments or thoughts you want to throw out there? Do you want to throw anybody under the bus for not being here? Any shout outs? Uh, well, you know, I will say that, you know, I would th- usually throw Mr. Rick Smith, who's probably listening to this episode, but, you know, he's celebrating his uh, youngest daughter's graduation. So we uh, congratulations to Mackenzie and, and much support to the Smith clan. We uh, look forward to see what she's going to be doing with her uh, career and journey in the uh good old uh career space but no um other than that just uh want to thank you for your commitment as usual i think uh you will also be you were a host and mc last year at our show um you will be uh you have been gracious to accept being the host and mc as our show and i think that's not by chance i think that you know when we had approached you last time um there you just have a thing with the community that you draw and everyone loves what you bring to the community and Quite frankly, you're just a hoot to hang out with. So, I mean, I think that, you know, when we had, we're over at the Unconvention in D.C., it was probably one of the best times. And everyone always says the Unconvention D.C. that was done by uh, um, Matt Rodello over at uh, Tech Marketing Engine and Corey Fruitman at uh, Instant House Call, when, you, when they threw that show, has been kind of the, the standard bearer that we've been trying to chase for all those that are just trying to do a little bit what they can with their own business and bring back home some uh, tangible things to do now now you're just putting the pressure on me that's what you're doing (laughs) so i'm just going to try to bring some colorful shirts i think that's what i'm doing all right my friend well we'll go ahead and uh, end off this episode here this has been an extended play uh interview here at pax 8 beyond uh again we were we were here and i had some time and it's like paco get over here and let's chat so uh good to see you good to see your team here Absolutely. Nice to meet Vanessa. Yes. Always a pleasure to see her around. So tell her she can she can uh, now talk to me and know who I am, and hopefully she'll re- remember my face. Yes, 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 yes. Because she has heard, very heard the word, the name Marvin B. for many years. Now she has finally put a face to the name. So. Yep. And uh, all right, sir. Well, good luck to you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. And folks. Um, I mean, you're going to hear from both of us again real soon. You know what to do. Head over to MSP Unplugged and listen to his podcast. Another great uh, voice in the community, probably bigger than this one. Uh, But uh, sharing the same goals, helping each other out, helping all of us learn how to run and grow our business, uh, sharing our journeys and experiences, and uh, making the world a better place. I was going to say, say punch something in the face, but (laughs) I said, folks, thanks for hanging out, and then uh, we'll see you next time. Holla. Holla.